gourmet number 24, uh, an unwelcome guest. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the nerd nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome, hunger-inducing tale of Toriko. Uh, we have a couple of chapters here uh, left before we wrap up Volume 3. And the last chapter, of course, saw us with um, really Toriko, uh, of course, jumping into the arena and uh, pretty much taking out just about everything uh, that was in his path, uh, actually taking and, and smashing uh, one of the, uh, the, is the Elephantsaurus or the Growlers straight through the acrylic dome and busting it out and uh, and really just all in all protecting the Battle Wolf uh, while the Battle Wolf uh, seemingly was, was you know, going to give birth. So... Uh, definitely a very cool chapter and, uh, you know, a lot of action and just kind of ended off on that, like, you know, okay, uh, the Devil Python is all riled up. Uh, Rin was too busy screwing around, you know, wetting herself, uh, thinking about Toriko and putting on makeup to actually listen to Director Mansum when he said to go and calm the thing down. And uh, we can only presume that, that the shit's going to hit the fan in this chapter. So that's where things left off in the last chapter. And that's kind of right where we where we pick up, you know. Rin is going to go and she's going to try to actually uh, spray this calming pheromone, this calming fragrance on that we find out is uh, is actually from the, uh, uh, the Smiling Manatee, I think it was called um, and it show, you know gives this whole background description of the, the little character and everything like that and it's actually it's the calmest uh, the calmest creature you know in, in the world and this is actually and this works on everything they said that basically it can stop like <laughs> they say it can stop like sexual arousal or sexual something uh, you know it, it, pretty much any any type of thing you could imagine any type of physical uh, riling up type of act will will just immediately calm you and uh, and just kind of immediately uh, relax you I, I guess kind of like a, like a NyQuil you know NyQuil 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 we love you you giant fucking Q uh, anyway uh, anyone who gets that reference is probably uh, probably older like me but um, at any rate, <laughs> so so we wind up having Rin is uh, is desperately trying to you know to get uh, get get to the Devil Python. The Devil Python, of course, is all riled up and just crazy. She's trying to get to it on the the backside of the arena where the uh, where the cage is and just trying to spray the stuff at it. This thing goes and makes a beeline and just goes and just goes to go straight out the front of the cage and she's freaking out because obviously she didn't do her job. So uh, it then goes down and it shows us in the actual arena and uh, Toriko still kind of you know watching over the battle wolf while the battle wolf is is giving birth to this this little pup this cub this uh this this young battle wolf and um and we see the of course just the destruction everybody running still uh you know trying to escape the arena because he did bust of course that giant hole in the dome uh you know in the two and a half foot thick or two and a half meter thick excuse me acrylic dome and then we wind up seeing uh the the bird the garalude i think it was called or aralude I, I forget the name of it right now but the bird with a bunch of heads and stuff like that and this thing goes to go flying to actually go through the hole and get out of the arena, you know? And then we see director Mansum, and he goes, and he's just like, no, you get back in your cage. Frying pan punch! You know, he just nails this thing with this awesome, like, freaking uppercut elbow. Uh, the thing goes flying back in, you know, just get back in your cage, you know. <laughs> so I just thought it was uh, it was real funny the way the whole thing was portrayed uh, and how everything was uh, was done. So then we go and we see this devil python, of course, uh, goes in and, and busts out and, and is coming out. And it winds up grabbing uh, the bird in one of its claws. And it goes and grabs the growlers in another one. And this thing is all riled up, man, hopped up on crack, you know, on the uh, on, on the stun. The super happy stimulant juice that that it was given earlier, and he's just you know, <laughs> just basically tearing up anything in its in, in its uh, in its path. Uh, the silverback, uh, the silverback troll kong, is like his eyes are you know just like holy shit. He's trying to run to get away, and just the whole exchange I think is, is more comical than anything. Um, we then go and we see. Uh, of course, Toriko is gonna, gonna, you know, try to stop that devil python and whatnot. And he's like, "Oh, geez, I really miss Coco right about now." But uh, we wind up seeing too the battle wolf. Um, it looks like there's been a lot taken out of her. Uh, and Toriko says that you know, even more so than normal, and he thinks that maybe it's because of um, you know the fact that it was these newly cloned cells. It's not actually a real battle wolf that has been alive for all these years and everything. So, so having this baby actually took more out of it uh, than than maybe it normally would. Um, so you know, we kind of get, get get that sort of hinted at, and then we go. And we see as everybody else is running and kind of turning tail and, and running for the hills, so to speak. Um, Director Mansum.
Ransom goes and he's like, he looks over at uh, Komatsu and he's like, why, why aren't you running, you know? And Komatsu explains, he's like, listen, you know, I've been on plenty of these things with Tariko and, you know, I just, it's kind of par for the course. This always happens. I even died once, you know? And Ransom's like, hey, little boy with big balls. That's what I like to see. I don't know if he talks like that, but that's just what I picture, you know what I mean? This big sort of jarhead of like, oh, you got it, good, good, you get him. <laughs> you can certainly teach the brass something about that. He even says something to that effect. You can teach the brass, you know? So he goes and he sees them all running. He's like, ah, oh, little little babies or pussies or whatever he calls me. He goes, you don't got your finger on a nuclear, you know, nuclear device or whatever now, so you're gonna go and run, right? And he goes, ah, it's probably better you run anyway in this situation. So then you go and you see this one lone figure sitting on uh, on, the, on you know on one of the seats or whatever. It just everybody else is running, and this one lone figure is just sitting there, and he's got this beard and just real like sunken eyes. And, uh, and and kind of like a robe or looks sort of like a sheik, you know, maybe somebody of like a like you know somewhere of, a, of a, an Arabic country. Um, and that's just what it appears like to me, you know. So to tell you the truth, it kind of appears like it's sort of like a terrorist like person, you know. So and it's just sitting there quiet, all calm and still. So Director Manson walks up and says, "Oh, you know, President, you know, Houghton or Tote, whatever the hell his name is of the you know of the so and so you know republic or nation." He's like, "You know, I'm, I know you were really looking forward to this, and I'm sure that uh, you know you're disappointed because everything." is, you know, kind of shit hit the, has hit the fan over here and whatnot, you know, and there's all this chaos ensuing. He's like, but, you know, for your own safety, sir, you really should get out of here and this and that. So this thing kind of goes and looks up at him, this person looks up at him, whatever, and then you go and you kind of see a, uh, a picture of just this hand that looks robotic, looks metal in nature, that comes out from under his robe. And then the next thing you know, there's Director Mansum, and he's he's getting run through right in the right in the gut area or maybe slightly off center i'm assuming and this hand comes straight through goes in the front comes out the back and you know and there's blood spurting everywhere and i'm like oh shit he just got mansum you know so so <laughs> so then you go and you're thinking well that's it jesus christ you know i wonder how resilient this guy is and what is the whole deal with this so then it goes into the next uh in the next instance he goes and he's boom frying pan punch <clears throat> and he smashes this thing you know away into the wall or whatever right and, uh, and he goes and he's just like, and then Mansum, it's like, he doesn't even miss a beat, man. It's like, he knows what's going on. And he just says, he goes, uh, he goes, oh yeah, you know, so, so you, you managed to make it in here or get your, get this new model in here. I had heard about this and this and that, you know, and then we go and we see coming to rise up out of the, the smoke and ashes from getting frying pan punched into the, to the wall or wherever it was. We go and we see this thing goes and kind of pulls off its mask or whatever. And the robe is still on it and everything like that, but it's the face that, that anteater looking face of one of those GT robots that we had of course seen back in Cavern Lagoon and then heard about briefly after that. Um, you know, when they, when they gave some explanations, just a few chapters back, uh, and, and clearly these are robots, uh, some kind of really strong robot cybernetic organisms, I guess, terminators, if you will, um, that are controlled, I guess, remotely, uh, and, and are, are they're supposedly some pretty tough customers to deal with from Gourmet Corp. So um, definitely kind of neat to see that, you know, because he's just like, ah, yeah, I thought you fooled me, and then he's like, ah, he's like, you got some balls only sending one of you after me, but that's fine, one of you, ten of you, it doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> So, and of course we know the devil python is all riled up and ready to go in there. The battle wolf, you know, certainly still needs, at least it looks like, needs some protecting. It's also worth noting too, it was kind of neat because the battle wolf, you could almost like, it could almost sense and smell it. There was something wrong because they, they cut to a, a, a drawing of the battle wolf right before this GT robot revealed itself and went and, and you know, just kind of. <laughs> put its hand right through uh, Director Mansum. Uh, the Battle Wolf kind of like looked up, or you know, almost looked like it, like it knew, it sensed that there was something wrong, uh, you know, over there with with this particular person. So definitely all kinds of chaos ensuing. Shit hit the fan, man. The Growlers is everywhere. There's Python shit all over the cage. It's just completely bat shit crazy nuts. And uh, certainly we're looking forward to seeing what the next chapter, the final chapter in the um, you know in the actual uh, volume over here is going to bring uh, to us. So so definitely the, the the action has heated up over here. And um, that actually kind of leads to my my chapter question over here. Um, do you like you know how? I guess it, it's hard to see because I'm new to to manga in general and whatnot. But do you like that where you can go and see? Because when I go and see somebody like this director Mansum get like a robot hand stuck entirely through his body, I think. Well, that person's going to die. You know what I mean? Like he just must have ripped through his rib cage, uh, maybe hit his spinal <laughs> spinal column on the way out. Maybe took out some precious organs that are in that area. You know, I don't know. There's like a stomach, a liver, you know, stuff like that. 
Do you like how that's portrayed um, in in manga, at least in the ones that I've read so far, where it seems like it seems like the only manga that I've read so far where people die and they remain dead is like Attack on Titan. People just drop like flies in there. I mean, you could fall down, get a cold, uh, you know, diabetes, gonorrhea, being overweight, whatever. People die all the time in Attack on Titan. But in these shonen uh, manga, the One Piece and, of course, now Toriko, it seems like people can just, you know, you can get blown up, shot, stabbed, pissed on, spit on, shit on, stepped on fucked with um and it's another reference to it to a song there if anybody can pick up on it but all these things you know can wind up happening to you and it just seems like they shake him off i mean like manson just seemed like he, he shook off that completely running through he's not even phased he's not even down on one knee um do you like that do you like how uh these these characters uh regardless of whether they have superhuman ability or not can just take this superhuman amount of damage and uh, and really just kind of keep smiling through it so um to me it kind of takes away some of the and, and don't get me wrong it comes from superhero comic book background you know even you know batman superman everything else you know there's there's many times that they took a, a beating and it actually showed you know they got smashed through a building or had a tank dropped on their head and uh, and it looked and it appeared that they were hurt or maybe they're out of commission for a couple of a couple of issues you know so uh, it just seems like it's much more uh, they can take a much higher damage, almost a Looney Tunes like amount of damage, and not get uh, you know not not really be hurt. So that is my question. What are your thoughts on that? You know, weigh in one way or another. You know, whether you think that it's appropriate, you've just kind of become accustomed to it because you read all these different manga, um, or or do you think it's just absolutely ridiculous and it takes away from some of the believability of what you're reading? So that is my question. Please leave your answer to this question in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it. Um, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Make yourself a sandwich. Uh, buckle up and get ready, and we will catch you in the next one, nation. Battle Wolf. Capture level immeasurable. Subscribe.